Good morning, adventurers. My name is Ben, and welcome to a morning show where I sit around, drink some tea, and talk about D&D. Mm. So first up, for T&D today, it is a very critical role kind of day today. So we have my original Dead People tea mug, uh, felt appropriate, featuring my sweet, sweet cow man, Caduceus Clay. Uh, and inside of it, we have some Unplug uh, tea from Econ Tea. Um, Again, it was that tea that was billed as like tea for men, but I was like, there's no way this is right. So I'm going to try some of it to see what it is. And it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. This is, it's pretty good. Anyway, getting into what we are actually talking about today, because I am very excited about this. It is the first true full launch for the 2022 calendar year from Wizards of the Coast. I have to say it like that because... For some ungodly reason, they decided to release Monsters of the Multiverse in, like, a, a two-step process, which is dumb and not the point. I do have that book already, but that's not the point, because what we are talking about today is... Da -da -da -da. <laughs> Critical Roles, Call of the Netherdeep. Uh, I have been very excited about this book ever since they announced it. Um, it is the second uh, Critical Role Wizards of the Coast book. Um, after the... Uh, Explorer's Guide to Wildmount that came out last year. Uh, this. <coughs> oh, excuse me. This is the first adventure module from Critical Role's world. So I am very excited to get into this thing because it is actually a new format. Um, with the Taldori campaign setting, we have we had had a Taldori campaign setting before. Same goes for Explorer's Guide to Wildmount. We had that kind of thing from Critical Role before. So I'm excited to see uh, the direction that this actually went. Uh, today, obviously, is just the first look, um, so I'm not going to be going over anything in here in depth yet because I haven't had a chance to actually read this thing, um, but uh, it, it is it, it is something I am excited about because, the, because of what I've seen in it so far. The concept of it is pretty, pretty cool, um, and so I am definitely excited about it. Um, so, like I said, just an overview here, so we're not going to do anything crazy. Uh, but we are going to jump into what I think a couple of the biggest uh, positives for it are uh, in terms of what I've seen so far, what I'm hoping to see from it, and what I'm kind of expecting to see from it. So let's take a look inside, shall we? Uh, first off, the cover art is gorgeous, obviously. Um, this is this is a really, really awesome cover. I really, really do like it. Um, and the wraparound to the back uh, features one of the monsters that is inside of the book, which is pretty cool. Um, so... Uh, this story, from what I can tell, because there is a provided little, like, story, uh, chart almost, like a, a progression chart that the characters should be on, more or less, um, it seems to run sort of the gamut of, uh, random, or not random, typical things that could happen in a D&D &D game, um, there are, it starts off at, like, a festival, a carnival, that kind of thing, uh, and they get a fateful vision, and they are sent on a quest, and whatever. Uh, they travel across the world a little bit to uh, uh, get more information about that quest. They defend the new place from evil. Uh, they go to another continent uh, where they are trying to find uh, different sort of allies within different places. Uh, they go to a sunken city, then they... Uh, go to try and find like an extra planar area and then they would enter that extra planar area and do some crazy stuff um, So this is this is a sort of like classical almost adventure But with the critical role twist on it the twist that Matt has been putting on uh, Less in campaign one, but in campaigns two and three um, where it's more like Eldritch almost uh, in the sense that like it, there is a there's an aspect of like that sort of goopy eldritch horror almost to it uh, in a lot of different ways, which is actually really cool. It also introduces an element in here um, called, come here, uh, oh Jesus, uh, I should have tried to pronounce this off camera before I started this, so we're gonna just sort of go for it. Ruidium, 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 R-U-I-D-I-U-M. Um, um, that is like a, an essence essentially in this nether deep that they talk about here. Um, that is essentially a corrupting force, which is pretty cool. Um, now, one of the favorite, one of my favorite things, I think, that is coming out of this book, at least as a concept to start off, uh, and a cool sort of like 
template that they have in here is that there is a rival group in this book uh, that is supposed to be actively playing against, essentially, the, the player characters. Um, and the rival group has progression stats as they go through. They are a group of five different adventurers. There are the five on this cover, obviously not the one in the gold in the center there, but uh, the five other people on the cover are all members of this alternate group. Um, and they all have three different stat blocks. Um, so what they do is as the story progresses, they transition between the different stat blocks uh, so that they become more powerful as they go through and as they interact with different things within the world, which is a really pretty cool mechanic. Uh, it's kind of like a legacy weapon concept, but for a character or an NPC so that they can actually grow with the story and become like these actual rival characters without having to build full NPC like player character NPC stat blocks for them because that's a lot of work and keeping up with that can be really really time consuming so uh, the I am really excited about getting that specific um, concept that specific sort of mechanic out of this book uh, that is probably my thing that I'm most looking forward to in this book um, I like uh, Critical Role a lot, just sort of as a general, sort of overarching concept, kind of. And so the fact that uh, we are getting this book in Critical Role's world means that I already have quite a bit of back knowledge on there. But it looks like they are giving quite a bit of lore and surrounding geographical information, that kind of thing, for each of the different places that is being visited in here. You don't need to buy a full another book to understand what is happening. Uh, so that is actually very nice. Uh, I appreciate it when they do that instead of just saying like, hey, reference this other book to get this information because that really kind of sucks because then it's like, oh, buy this other $50 book on top of the $50 book that you already bought. Go have fun with your $100 worth of books so that you can understand one sentence in one of those two books. Not not the point. Uh, um, so I am uh, appreciative of that in spite of the fact that I do already own those books. Um, and then uh, the way that this thing sort of jumps around, I think is an interesting way to do an adventure. It definitely feels like an epic sort of uh, journey as opposed to a more gritty hero's adventure kind of deal, if that makes any sense. The distinction is pretty clear in my head, but I know that saying it out loud, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense necessarily. But I am excited to see the difference in that. Um, moving on to, honestly, to the appendices, because... The story is going to be what the story is, and I don't know what that is entirely yet. There is a story summary in here that I read, but I'm not going to, like, spoil the whole story here. Uh, that is for Friday. I gave, like, the, the bullet points through with no specifics, so I, I don't know what to tell you there. Uh, if that ruined the story for you, I do apologize, but uh, it seemed pretty safe at the time. So, moving on to the appendices in this book, there are a solid six of them. One of them is a poster-sized map, which is cool. Uh, it is in the back of the, the, this here book for me. I'm not going to rip it out right now because that seems like a lot of work. Uh, but it is, it, it's, it's a hefty map that I am actually very excited about. Um, so, uh, that's, that's, that's a fun thing outright. Um, in addition to that, there is a bunch of concept art for the story, which is different than I feel like what we normally get in uh, D&D books, and I think that is part of the critical role influence on it. I'm really, really looking forward to getting uh, that. It, it is very cool to look at. I flipped through it very quickly. Uh, I didn't get to read a whole lot about it, but it is a pretty cool section of the book, so I do highly recommend taking a look at that uh, if you have the book in front of you, just because I, I personally really like having a point of reference for what the... Uh, story writers were working off of and where their heads were at as they were conceiving of this story because it makes it easier for me to process it and figure out how to help plan it and do the story that they are trying to tell justice in the way that I am trying to tell it as well. I have said before and I'll say again I don't love modules particularly much but the I like being able to conceive of the story because it does help me sort of think about how I would write my own stories in that sort of way. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, in addition to that, there are a few different magic items, which are pretty cool, including, including, I guess, vague, mild spoiler here. Not really, but kind of a little bit. Skip forward, like, 
15 seconds if you don't want to hear this, including a new vestige of divergence that has not been seen before. I'm very excited about it. It is a wondrous magic item. It's like a necklace thing. It's very cool. You sort of just, they discover it in chapter one, so I don't feel like that's too much of a spoiler, but it is pretty, pretty cool. Um, then there is a full slew of creature stat blocks, and these creature stat blocks are honestly kind of awesome. Uh, there are obviously normal ones. There, there are a couple of like Cobalt Soul stat blocks. Uh, there are monsters or not monsters, story specific stat blocks that are thrown in throughout the uh, different uh, chapters of the book. In addition to uh, a little bit of uh, the this appendices here or this appendix here, you this is where you also get all of your stat blocks for the rival adventuring party, which is really really awesome. Uh, because it gives you the ability to just compare them to each other really quickly. And if, for whatever reason, your party feels like it is overpowered when compared to the rivals at any given point, you can flip forward and add a little bit to that stat block to give them a little bit more oomph if you are looking for get, for that and your party is, for whatever reason, just absolutely sweeping them. Just, just a thought. Uh, but what I am actually excited about from this appendix is some of the, like, horror-based monsters that matt likes to conceive of for his games um the there are several of them in here and it is all pretty much corrupted things based on the uh this ruidium that is just entrenched in this alternate reality uh if you are watching this as opposed to listening it to it this corrupted giant shark and this death's embrace are fantastic and they look really awesome they're really cool uh, if you are listening to it, allow me to describe them briefly for you. Uh, the Corrupted Giant Shark is a hammerhead shark that is essentially oozing black, veiny substances, which is pretty cool, uh, from all of the different orifices, as long as, or as well as bits of skin. Uh, and the Death's Embrace is like a giant, uh, clam thing with tentacles and teeth. I don't know how else to describe it. It's pretty cool. Um, they're all aberration-based, they're all, uh, that kind of thing. Most of them have uh, some kind of, like, psychic basis to their damage, which is cool, as far as I can tell, at least. And uh, I I am a huge fan of the psychic sort of uh, themes in, in some of these books, uh, or in some of these monsters. I really like space, and I really like uh, mental stuff. So psychic damage, that kind of thing, I really like to lean into. I'm kind of bummed there aren't more spells for it in the game. Hey, wizards, go ahead and throw some more in there. But I'm happy with it. I like it a lot. Um, in addition to things like that, you do get a couple of them that are in, uh, like, the Explorer's Guide to Wildmount or the Telluride Campaign Guide, like this Horizonback Tortoise or the Gloomstalker, uh, which is nice because those are things that you're obviously going to need for this kind of thing, but you won't necessarily have to go buy the full other book to get. Uh, now, it does say on occasion that, like, there are things that are bolded, and you should use the monster manual for that. But that's a pretty easy assumption that you should be able to flip the monster manual or something adjacent to it if you are running an adventure module out of D&D 5e. Um, usually you get those before you start getting modules. Um, but that is... I think that's everything that I'm going to actually cover uh, today on this book. It is a super cool book. It's very pretty. The art in it is fantastic. Uh, one of my favorite things about it is that on every single one of these pages, it's got uh, little, like, almost red veiny things in the corners near the page numbers because that is kind of the overarching theme of this guy right here. And I am a big fan of that. I think that it's a cool little thematic thing to sort of throw in there. And I, I think that they did a really good job with that as part of layout and everything like that. So, that is the end of that. Moving on to the shows that we have coming out today, L Wednesday. Um, I guess my week here is going to be somewhat Critical Role focused because I have this one, then I have tomorrow where Critical Role is happening, and then I have Friday where I'm going to be talking about that book more in depth. Anyway, uh, Wednesday shows. We only have four of them. It is Wednesday. There is a juggernaut on this day, so uh, they, they tend to shy away from those days. Uh, we have Dimension 20. They are continuing Starstruck Odyssey. Uh, we have Knocked Prone, we have Venture Maidens, and we have Trials and Trebuchets, so definitely go check those out. Let them know that I sent you. I don't know if it does anything, but it would be really cool if one of these shows would be like, hey, and thanks to uh, for sending... Uh, yeah. Um, 
<laughs> that was that was a cohesive sentence, I promise. Um, so definitely let them know that I sent you. Uh, I am working on getting my feet back under me for uh, my regular watching schedule. I'm behind on a couple of my main shows, and I really want to get that sorted back out. And so I will be catching up with these as soon as I get the chance to. Uh, but I highly, highly recommend them. They are a blast to get to consume. So that is everything I have to talk to you guys about today. Thank you so very much for making me part of your morning routine. I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much in particular to my patrons. You guys are the ones that make this show possible. Uh, and if you're interested in becoming a patron, uh, there's a link to that in the description of this video. Uh, my patrons are the ones that give me the ability to like buy these books on release and um, be able to talk about them to you guys. So I, I honestly cannot state enough how appreciative I am for them and for their massive amounts of generosity. So thank you very, very much for all of that. Now, as I mentioned, that is everything I have to talk to you guys about. So don't forget, drink tea, play D&D, &D, and keep on rolling. <laughs>